everyone welcome to new bear i'm monique and today we are adding to the kaleidoscope project except we're not tatting a butterfly what we're going to be doing can be used with lots of little mini motifs we are going to be working with a paper clip tatted paper clips can make really cute little bookmarks you can use them as a card topper they can dress up your gift wrapping you might even use them in your filing system for those of us that still use a filing cabinet some patterns are designed specifically for paper clips while others are not. Butterfly Charlotte wasn't designed for a paper clip and for that reason we are going to use Butterfly Charlotte today minus the beads. Not mucking around with beads today. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to work out the position of your tatting in relation to your clip. Then you can add clips to pretty much whatever you like. You're going to need a paper clip, some graph paper, roughly 60 centimeters of scrap thread and a marker pen. Now we're only marking our scrap thread, so it doesn't need to be a special marker. It can just be a normal pen. You'll also need a shuttle with some good thread. Let's go. No doubt you all know that paper clips come in a variety of sizes, colors and shapes. So choose one which will complement your project as well as one that will be in proportion to your project. You don't want a huge paper clip with a tiny speck of tatting on the top. It's just going to look ridiculous. First up I'm going to show you how I work out the position then I'll show you how I attach the tatting to the paper clip. I'm using a 50mm clip and working in size 15 thread. I use the scrap thread to work the two lower rings of the butterfly. This is the part that's going to attach to the paper clip. So whatever part of your pattern you're wanting to join to the clip is the part you need to scrap tat. Make sure your scrap thread is the same size as what you want to work your final piece in. Don't scrap tat in a size 20 and work your final piece in a 40. As I mentioned before, this is a 15. So let's count, say, four in from the Pico. So we're going one, two, three, four. We're going to mark that fourth stitch. This is a 40. And we're going to do the same thing. One, two, three. There's our fourth stitch. You can see why if I line those up. You can see why we're going to be in trouble if we don't keep our scrap thread and good thread the same size. There is no way our marks are going to line up meaning our project will be out of whack on the clip. So we have our scrap tatted rings, our paper clip, our graph paper and our pen. Now I've taped my clip to the paper. That's simply so it doesn't move on me as I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. Place your scrap rings up against the clip. Now the clip has been centered on the grid line. I'm also going to center my rings like so. We're looking for a square contact point between the ring and the clip. So a place where our stitches sit flat against the clip. For me, that stitch is right here. Use your pen to mark your stitch like I just did. You only need to mark one ring. The other side will be the same. Counting our stitches from our pico, we have one, two, three, four, five, and we've marked on stitch six. Our join needs to be either side of this stitch. So I'm going to make my join in here after the fifth stitch so it sits just that little bit wider on the clip. Now we transfer this information to our pattern. Looking at our original pattern, ring B was 4, pico 6, pico 8, pico 2. Ring B is now 4, pico 6. The top part of the ring doesn't change. After the pico we have 5, we're joining to the clip. Another three gives us our original count of eight. Then we have the joining pico and 
2. Ring C becomes a mirror image of ring B. So we now have 2 joined back to ring B, 3 joined to the clip, 5 pico 6 pico 4. Now in this tutorial I'm only going to show how to work the lower part of Charlotte. If you need a full video for Charlotte there'll be a link down below for you. So ring A is done. I've started ring B with 4, join back to ring A, worked 6, a decorative pico and 5. Take your paper clip, make sure it's the right way up, sit it to the left of your work. And we simply join like we're making a regular join. So go down through your paper clip, pull up a loop, run your shuttle through, and adjust. We want our stitches sitting on the edge of the clip. It's very easy to pull that all the way through. So that is too far. We don't want it that far, we just want it so our stitches sit right on the edge. We're finishing out our count with three. Joining Pico and two. Now, this little dude is going to want to party all over the top of the clip. That's fine. Don't worry about it. We are starting ring C. We're working two. Join back. Ring B, we're working three. And joining to the other side of the paper clip. So again we join like we're making a regular join. Just so your stitches sit right on the edge of the clip. Continuing our count we have five Decorative Pico and six Pico four. I'm going to complete ring D and be back with you in a tick. Now we can leave it like this or we can cover the top of the clip as well. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm also going to show you a couple of ways we can hide our tails. Slide your butterfly down so it's out of the way. Leave a good tail. Hold your thread behind the clip, reach through, pull up a loop, and run your shuttle through that loop. 
bring your thread forward come from underneath the clip pull the thread to the back and run your shuttle through that gives you your stitch tighten everything up now we're ready for our second stitch so again thread at the back come from the top pull up a loop bring that thread forward come from underneath pull the thread to the back and run your shuttle through that loop tighten your stitches up as you go you want to be careful with tightening up your stitches because if you leave a gap like I have here and then tighten up you're going to give yourself a pico and that's great if that's what you want except I don't really want picos at the moment so we're going to tighten everything up so that we just have our stitches So depending on how far down you want your stitches to run, what have we got one? What six? I'll push that up a little bit. Pull my butterfly back around. Might do one more just to fill in this gap. I'm going to take off a fair bit of thread using a needle going to the back of my clip I'm going to run that needle under the join of the butterfly Going back to the front, looking at the space between my joins, I reckon I've got about three stitches to fit in here. So I'm going to put my butterfly to the front, take my thread to the back of the clip, using a crochet hook, go down to pick up my loop. And just do what we did before so make that stitch bring it forward take it through to the back
So it's a little bit fiddly, but I think it really dresses up your paper clip. So that's our three stitches, flipping your butterfly back over. Going to the back again, we're going to use our needle to go through the second join. Separate, separate that out so you can see. And now we're continuing down the second side. I am going to reattach my thread to my shuttle just because I find a shuttle and pick a lot easier to use than going back and forth between the crochet hook and the needle. But do what works for you. of long tail on the second side as well we're going to sew our ends in on both sides on this side we're going to go through the cap of the stitch and on this side we're going to run the needle up the back of the stitches so thread your needle we're going to go through the caps just like we do for normal tatting thread and split my ply. Hold on to your stitches and pull. On the other side, we're going to run straight up the back of the stitch. Now I wear a thimble to do this. It can be a bit tight to get the needle up in that stitch. So just do two or three at a time. I think this way is neater than sewing in through the caps, but it's a lot harder to get that needle through.
Now you know that if there is the slightest chance I can avoid sewing ends in, I will find a way. So we can use a magic loop with our paper clip. Have the loop end towards the bottom of the paper clip. Using a little bit of tape, we're going to tape our tails to the top of the clip. And we're just doing what we did earlier to make our stitches. So leave a tail. We're going down. So we're going over the clip and our magic loop. take off. It's really only to get it started. Because now we can pull that through. And wrap the tail around the bottom of the clip to continue with making our stitches. So again, it's fiddly, but I really like the look of the tails being completely hidden and not showing up through the caps. When you're done, Tail through that loop. Hold your stitches and again just pull it through. How easy was that? So whether you're wanting to use a little heart, maybe a flower, whatever your pattern may be, scrap tat the lower section that's going to attach to the paper clip, split the count accordingly, and there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video.